Hi folks, uh, this video is going to be a very quick one. We're just going to look at how to add more than two vectors together and we're also going to have a quick look at a three-dimensional vector. Okay, so if you look at the first example here it says find the sum of vector a, b, and c. If you find the, the sum of it, what you're going to do, just like a lot of other vector questions, you're going to start at the beginning and draw in your resultant vector something like this. I'm not very good at drawing, but there it is. Technically, if I were to label this, it would be called vector A plus vector B plus vector C, also called the resultant vector. Okay? Literally, that's all you do. There are no numbers attached to this particular question. It's just a matter of writing it out just like this. I might as well do it since I'm basically done. Pretty quick, eh? Um, so when you draw your vectors, you do them in order and at the very end the resultant vector is the one that starts from the beginning until the end. Okay, And this would be the head to tail method that we talked about in a previous video. Okay, let's look at the next page. Here's a three-dimensional vector and sometimes you'll get questions like this and here's how you would do it. So it says uh, vector AE plus vector HC. So we're supposed to add these two vectors up. We're not going to end up with a number, we're going to end up with a resultant vector. Okay, that will be our answer. So let's just draw this in. Here's vector AE. Oops, I should really do that again since my drawing is terrible. There, that's better. There's vector AE and vector HC. It's kind of coming at us here, like that. So what would the resultant vector be? Well, the way to go about doing a question like this is try to get these two vectors so that they connect head to tail, just like the other questions we were doing. So you can take this and notice that HC is identical to EB, for example. Okay? Therefore, the resultant vector, if we were to draw the final vector, would be this one right here. So the resultant vector would be vector AB as our answer. Okay, That would be the answer to this question if we added two vectors. There's another answer that would also make sense. There's another spot that makes that's identical to vector AB and it would be this vector right here, vector DC. So if a teacher gave you the answer wrong for saying DC, you could argue and say no, it's actually they're actually completely identical. Okay? Um, just to prove that, I'll move these vectors. I'll move vector AE right here. Notice how that's identical or congruent to DH. And then I'll take EB and move it to HC. And notice the resultant vector could be DC as well. So let's try the next example. Let me erase my writing. There we go. I'll get a pen again. So we'll do, we'll do blue pen for the initial vectors head to tail. So AD Let's draw that. Aren't these fun? Uh, we have vector AE. And too bad I can't draw right on the line. And AB. Wow. What's going to happen with all of this? So let's move things around. So we have AD. Next was AE. So let's bring that right up here because that's congruent or exactly the same thing as DH. And then we have AB. So then the resultant vector, I'll do it in red, would be from A all the way to G. Okay? There it is. That's the resultant vector. So the answer would be vector AG would be our answer. And I believe that would that's the only answer we could get because there's nowhere else in this cube that would be able to house this exact same vector going this exact same direction. It has to be from the this corner right here until this corner right here. So AG would be our answer. Okay, that's how you deal with a three-dimensional situation like we have here. Okay? Hope you understood that. Take care.